Hey, powerhouse. I have a very special invitation just for you. I would love to invite you to the Powerhouse Lawyers Retreat happening September 27th through October 1st in beautiful Ocean Isle, North Carolina. The Powerhouse Lawyers Retreat is a life-changing experience that every single woman in law not only deserves, but needs. It's a four-night getaway in a luxurious oceanfront home with all of your needs taken care of and a house full of other powerhouse women who want the exact same things as you. It's more than a mastermind and more than a community and more than just networking connections. Powerhouse Lawyers Retreat is like nothing that's ever been done before in the legal profession. The only words that I can come up with to describe it are life-changing. And if you don't believe me, just ask any of the past attendees who describe it as lightning in a bottle. One of the best experiences of their life, changing the entire trajectory of their career and a solid differentiation point between life before and after the retreat. One thing is for sure, your life and you will never be the same. So come join us September 27th through October 1st in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. Spots are limited, so go grab yours. Head on over to eringuerner.com slash powerhouse hyphen lawyer hyphen retreat. See you there. Are you an ambitious attorney who is ready to build a life that you cannot wait to wake up for? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Powerhouse Lawyers, a podcast for the powerhouse in each of us. I'm your host, Erin Gurner, and if you're ready to practice law differently, let's go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Powerhouse Lawyers podcast. I'm your host, Erin Gurner, and I have such an exciting guest for us today. She really is my South Florida sister. Our <laughs> stories are so parallel and so similar that I just knew I had to have her on the show. And I just think she's stinking adorable and so much fun. And I know we're going to have a fun chat today. So Nikki mm -hmm. Odin, welcome to the show. Nikki is a lawyer and a mom mentor who helps working moms battle burnout by teaching them to own their days and crush their goals without mom guilt. Right. After walking away from a lucrative career as a commercial litigator for a prestigious international law firm to become a stay-at-home mom, Nikki learned firsthand how easily a woman can completely lose herself in motherhood. Gosh, I so feel you on that. Resonates mm -hmm. so much with me. Realizing that she needed something outside of just being a mom, she started a home-based business and quickly experienced what it meant to live in survival mode. I feel <laughs> that too. So many of us. Eventually, through lots of trial and improvement, and I love how you said trial and improvement, um, she learned how to harmonize what, is she, what she wanted as an ambitious woman and who she wanted to be as a mother and is teaching other women to do the same. And her mission is to help moms love their mom lives and themselves just a little more. And I love that. Nikki is the founder of Your Ideal Mom Life, the host of the Love Your Mom, po Love Your Lot. Love Your Mom Life podcast, I promise I can talk, and the author of But Definitely Wear a Mascara, Hats to Help You Love Your Mom Life and Yourself a Little More. I'm so excited to read that book, and I'm telling you, I always used to laugh and tell people if I had to go to a desert island, I was bringing my mascara. So yes, we are 100% on the same page about mascara, but welcome to the show, Nikki. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Erin. I'm so excited to be here, and I think it is definitely not a coincidence that our paths cross because we are certainly cut from the same cloth. We're just in different parts of the country, you know, living our, living out our, our dreams, but with the same mission. So it's such an honor to be here with you. I love that. I've been so um, amazed at the community of women lawyers who are out there, right? As we start to do this work, you feel like sometimes you're on an island and then you just turn around and there is a Nikki and there's an Amy and there's all of these women who are just, you know, rising tides lift all boats, right? So it's just exactly. such a blessing. And um, I'm just full of gratitude for this mission and so grateful that you're here to do this work together. So I would love for you to tell our audience 
how in the world Nikki got here? Why'd she go to law school? What does this journey look like? And how did you arrive to where you are today? I went to law school because my parents tricked me. And I know that sounds victim-y, but that is the absolute truth. So I always wanted to be an actress. I definitely have a little propensity towards drama. You know, I have in the past. Now I, now I understand and I can own it, but I really did enjoy performing despite being shy. I loved the idea of it. I was like bent and I told my parents, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be an actress. And my dad was like, you know, being a lawyer is like being an actress in a courtroom. And I was like, huh, that sounds like a, like a stable solution to what I want to do. So I just got it in my head and I decided in college to major in English writing and to take that forward. I took a year off in between law school. I applied to one school because the boy I was dating lived in South Florida and I wasn't going to move because I didn't want to leave him and went to law school, ended up graduating first in my class, ended up marrying that guy. A year and a half later, ended up divorcing him and met my husband, who is the father of my children and the absolute love of my life. And I think those things, you know, going through law school, going through the the tumult, you know, of of trying to stay number one in your class. I don't know if anyone else listening has had that experience, but like once you get there, it suddenly becomes something you can lose. I, I didn't go out with the intention of becoming number one in my class, but I had that pressure on me because I put it on myself those entire three years. And then I was planning a wedding and just, you know, trying to ignore the fact that my ex and I were not compatible. And you know, all of those experiences really shape you as a person. And then going into motherhood really shaped the way I I tackled motherhood. So I was with a very large international law firm practicing commercial litigation. And I was in my sixth year when I decided like, I can't do this forever. I looked at my husband and I said, this is not arch over the, over the horizon for me. I am burnt out. I'm really stressed and I really don't like it. Like, it's not even like I like it. I, I'm good at it, but I don't like it. So he was like, all right, well then quit and I'll take care of us. I was like, say what? And he was like, you can just stay home with our baby. And I was like, okay. So having that mentality of like, I can conquer anything. I'm really smart. I went into being a stay-at-home mom with that mentality. Like, how hard can it be? And now I laugh at myself because- it was the absolute hardest thing I've ever done. And I quickly realized I had no idea what I was doing. And it didn't matter like how much I read or listened to other people. Like my baby was different from every other baby, right? So it was it was tough. And right when I started to feel like I got the hang of it, when she was nine months old, I found out I was pregnant with my son. And I was like, okay, I just did this. I got and I didn't this. want to be Right. I was like vacillating between gratitude because I had a friend who at the time was trying to get pregnant with a baby and she was having a really tough time. And I, so I, I was like, okay, be grateful that you you aren't in that situation. But also with this like panic of what is this going to look like? I definitely don't know what it's like to have two under two. And by the time he was born, I was a mess. Like I had completely lost myself in motherhood. I didn't know which way was up. I couldn't even remember what it was like to be a lawyer and to like walk out the door and have these adult conversations and go pee by myself whenever I wanted to and definitely have my teeth brushed. You know, it was like crazy. And finally, after two years, I realized I wasn't happy. And it took me a long time to admit that out loud, especially because I felt like there were girls back at the law firm who would have been like, are you kidding? Like you, you get to stay home all day. What are you complaining about? And then my husband, who was like, you know, really working hard to care for the three of us and give me this life at home. And I felt just like really ungrateful telling him I, I didn't want it, but I was honest and I told him and he was great. He was like, okay. He's like, well, let's figure it out. So I like you started a home-based business and got into a social selling situation where I met some amazing people, some absolutely phenomenal women, really dug deep into that personal development, which is when I learned about all my drama and the, the things that I've created um, and the things I should take credit for. And from there, really developed a love and absolute passion for other mompreneurs and women who are wanting more than what their nine to five is giving them or what they're, what they're taking from their nine, nine to five, or maybe just have just like a dream on their heart to have this harmony between being 
a mom in business and the mom they want to be. And I, through that process, I realized I, I want to coach moms. And so I, I started your ideal mom life and then the podcast, love your mom life. And then just last year released my first book, but definitely wear mascara. And it's all centered around the same theme about loving yourself so that you can be the best mom and the best business person you can be. So what are some of those shifts that you, those significant shifts that you were able to make? Cause I resonate and I know that a lot of our listeners can resonate with that losing yourself in motherhood and even, you know, conversely losing yourself in your job, yep. right? Like we, this, this, right. We, we tend to get wrapped up in these things. So how were you able, what were some things that you did to kind of unwrap that? What were some steps that you took and then now advise moms to take to kind of just some get moving, right? Those simple, small steps to just kind of get out of that cycle. Yeah, it's definitely small steps is the key. Like you just said, just start with something really, really small. And my first step, although I think it could sound small, but it's a lot more profound than it sounds was just deciding what I wanted. And I think a lot of times when we are sucked in, whether it's into motherhood or a business or, you know, the law and we're not happy, we have to really take a step back and ask ourselves, what do I want? Because so many of us haven't done that. We haven't stopped and given ourselves permission to even think about what that would look like. And we haven't given ourselves permission to continue to dream. I think that, you know, for those of us who are raising little humans, we foster that in our kids. We're like, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? And we really want them to believe they can do those things. And somewhere along the way, maybe in college, maybe in law school, whatever, we stop dreaming. And then we get into these sort of, I call them ruts and they can happen whether you're a stay-at-home mom or you're, you know, billing 2,500 hours a year at the law firm or anywhere in between. You can get into these ruts because you haven't paused to think about what you want. And maybe it's not something you figure out in a day. Maybe it's like, all right, I'm going to take 30 minutes and think about it or journal or meditate about it and really give myself permission for my mind to wander and to dream about what I want. I always tell moms, you've got to start there because if you don't know what you want, then how you spend your days doesn't matter. That's exactly right. I remember the first time my coach asked me that and I was like, what do you mean? What do I want for dinner? You know, I mean, like I truly, Nikki, like no one had ever asked me that question before. And like, I, at the time I was like really embarrassed and feeling like I really don't even know who I am or what I want, but what I know now in hindsight is that that is so familiar yeah. that, that feeling of we've just been going on autopilot our whole lives, especially as high achieving female attorneys, we have been chasing the next gold star for as long as we can remember. And we haven't even thought about what we wanted or what we liked because we were setting for the next test, right. trying to be the best, mm -hmm. be the best, do the best, not even knowing how capable we were and what we actually wanted. So it is so key to take that time. Heck, if I laughed at myself today, I put my ear pods in and went on a walk and never turned on my podcast. It's just, <laughs> you know, but I just, that was, obviously God's way of telling me that I just needed to walk in silence mm -hmm. and just listen to my thoughts and how rarely yep. we do that. Yes. Being still is so powerful. It really is. It is. So what do you find most moms are struggling with? Cause I know like perfectionism is such a huge thing that we battle, not only as lawyers, because it's ingrained in us. We're trained mm -hmm. literally to be perfectionists. We're our brains are trained like no other grad school. I don't think anyone like just the education that we get and the way they train you to think, but we're also now perfectionists in our whole, like that bleeds into every other aspect of our lives. So like, what is the conversation with moms around that? And how have you been able to combat that yourself? I joke around that perfectionist is defined as Nikki Odin, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it, I think the first thing you have to realize is that it's not necessarily who you are. It's a skill and it's a trait that you as the strong, powerful human are able to deploy when you need it. And I think when you think about it that way, it's harder to allow it to automatic, but because I think that there are moments where being a perfectionist is a great thing. And even outside the law, like if I was going to hire someone to handwrite 
wedding invitations for me, I'd want that person to be a perfectionist. If there's someone going to, is going to do brain surgery on my child, I'd want that person to be a perfectionist. So I do think in right order in the proper doses, perfectionism is a great thing. So having said all that, where we get into trouble is when it runs on automatic and we allow it to rob us of small wins and allow it to trample over things that should otherwise be joyful because they weren't perfect. And the truth is in most situations in life, there's no such thing as perfect. And there's definitely no such thing as perfect when it comes to going for a big goal or, you know, motherhood, there's, there are going to be tons of mistakes along the way. And when you're a perfectionist, you fail to see those mistakes as gifts. And that's what they are. They're information that you didn't have before. And that's something that I really learned intimately in my social selling experience. And then as, as an entrepreneur, like having my own business, I, by failing, have learned so much about what not to do or what, what to do differently next time or how to be better. And if I hadn't stumbled that way, I wouldn't be as good as I am now. And I won't get any better if I don't continue to stumble. Having that mindset shift is absolutely key to being able to utilize perfectionism the way that it can best serve you in the most powerful way possible. Otherwise, it really is it's almost a handicap because it's like this lead weight that's that's keeping you from reaching your full potential, from trying new things, from understanding that done is indeed definitely better than perfect. And also from like giving that message to children. If you're raising kids, you don't want them to not even try out because they're afraid they might fail or they're not going to do it perfectly, right? You would never tell your kid that. So why are you telling yourself that? I know. And that is, I mean- you are so right. I always tell my clients like when yielded for good, these qualities that these traits that we carry with us are superpowers. But when yes. we let them overtake our lives, then they bleed in the negative. And that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I have two daughters and I look at them and when I am beating myself up, I have to take that moment and say, what would I tell my girls right now? If I, if they were coming to me with this exact problem, would they Right. Because we would never, the stuff we say to ourselves, we would never say either out loud or to somebody else, even people we don't like, right? right? Like even people I don't like, I wouldn't say some of that stuff too. No, it's terribly rude. <laughs> terribly rude. But the mindset shift is huge. I call it messy action. I mean, that's just, mm -hmm. it's like my, that's kind of my theme of 2023 is messy action. Just let's go and move. Our brain is not our friend in these situations. It's not. You just have to start taking action. I love that yes. so much. Okay, so tell me about this amazing book of yours. I want to hear what this book is about. Who are who are we helping? What are we talking about? And um, and your and definitely wear mascara. It's a book for moms who work or for who moms who have big goals outside of being mommy and wife. So most of those women that I'm talking to have some kind of business on their heart or, you know, other aspirations or goals that remove them from being mommy and wife. And therefore they have this interplay of guilt because they're not eyeball to eyeball with their kids and their spouse every day. And then they also have the guilt of not working all the time and all of the things that come along with that. And at the heart of it, it's really about how to love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you're able to navigate these things. You will speak to yourself the way you'd speak to someone you love versus, you know, someone you don't like very much. It also is full of really practical hacks on just how to make your, your life a little bit easier, like from time management skills to how to get out the door looking nice quickly, especially when you have other, you know, humans that who need to also look presentable and smell good. And, everything in between all the way down to like meal planning and, and all the mistakes that I've made and how I can use those now as lessons for other moms who come after me. Um, and it's super easy to read. It's like every chapter is really short, which I did on purpose. Cause I know mamas are busy. And I, if I do say so myself, it's, it's really funny. I love So tell me about the title. How'd you come up with the title? So when you go on Amazon and go look up the book, but definitely wear mascara, you'll see the cover. And that's me with my two kids. Those are my kids. I am pulling my hair out because they're screaming, fighting with each other. And so it's like a juxtaposition of, but definitely wear mascara because you should still, no matter how crazy life is and no matter how much 
you want to scream, do something, even if it's really little, that's just for you to show that you love yourself and that you're taking care of yourself. I love that. And mascara is definitely one of those things. For me too. So fun. Okay. So we have been throwing around this term hot mess express forever, which I think it needs to be eliminated from the English language. We just need to stop (laughs) calling ourselves hot mess express because it's like what you focus on grows. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're not a hot mess express. Yes. We have a very hectic life. Yes. We have a lot going on, but it's right. It's not about finding a balance. It's Mm -hmm. about easing into the ebb and flow of where you are and utilizing the tools in your tool belts and a good mindset to, you know, help you win. But we've still got all of these moms out there who are on the hot mess express. How do we get off the hot mess express? So I think the most practical way to get off the hot mess express, having been on that train for a long time before I figured this out, is just do a a brain dump every week. It's like the silliest, easiest thing. And people are like, that can't possibly work. It, it is. It's it's like the really powerful. You sit down. I like to do it on Sundays, but you do it whenever you just feel overwhelmed. Like I was just talking to my best friend the other day and she was saying how I, I feel like I'm like drowning. Like, have you done a mental dump? She's like, you know what? I'm going to do that right now. And it, she just sat down, wrote down everything that was on her mind. Doesn't matter what area of your life it pertains to it. Because again, we are multifaceted humans. We're not just business people. We're not just mothers. We're not just anything. We're all those things. So we have different facets of our life pulling at us at at all different times. So I write down everything like workout videos that I've been meaning to like save in, in YouTube or text messages I need to respond to birthday cards I need to send and then bigger things too, like goals I'm working on achieving. And like, what are those little things that I need to get done this week to get me there? everything, 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 books I want to read, courses I want to take, just dump it all out. It's like vomiting on the paper. Mm -hmm. And then you just feel better because number one, you get it all captured in one place. So now it's much less likely to slip through the cracks. And two, when it's all laid out in front of you like that, you can really see, okay, what what on this list do I really need to do? And what can I delegate or get someone to help me with? Or maybe even eliminate altogether because it's not all that important. And that process really, really helps you feel a lot more organized and like you have it together. Like you're not a hot mess. It is. That is so true. I do that all the time. I advise my clients to do that all the time. That's one of the very first things we do because overwhelm lives in your head. Yep. It just lives there. And you, then you walk by those pictures that you forgot to hang and they're still hanging there. And you just add that to the mental, you know, hamster wheel of stuff, but you have to get it all on paper. I, that's why I'm a huge advocate for journaling, especially For attorneys, I have found it incredibly helpful for them just because our brains are working on high, high, high speed with so much information on the daily, just in their job alone, not to mention all of the stuff that's happening at home, toilet paper, food, (laughs) life, water, any of like the, you know, the basic essentials. We're just talking about her caseload at work. Right. So for them to be able just to dump that on the page. And you're exactly right to then be able to be like, what are some of these things that I, that are not even mine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your mind gets so excited when you can check stuff off. Like, yes. do you know how good it feels inside to just be like, boop, I called Such the groomer. Accomplishment. Boop, I did that. Boop, or whatever. And just, even if it's not the most important pressing thing, just to start crossing stuff off that list, like gives your body internally and your brain, the evidence that it's working. (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes you make the list and you're like, you know what? It's really not that bad. You know, that, that can happen too. Like sometimes it's like, Oh, I got a lot on here. I need to delegate. But sometimes you're like, you know what? I think I was just, it was like swirling around in my, my brain. I needed to get it out. And now I'm realizing I totally got this. Everything's fine. And it helps you, I think, see the first step and a place of overwhelm. Yep. Right. Because when you're like, I have this big project and I don't know where to start. Everything is so huge. If you can get things down on paper, cause you don't have to eat the whole elephant at once. It's just, you nope. start with the foot, but you can't know what it is unless you can see the broken down parts. So that's another great tip of advice to use that brain dump for is it figure you can figure out where to just start. Yes. Just starting is so key when you are stuck. Just take one step. It doesn't matter what step it is. It it doesn't need to be 
like the ideal step. Just take one step and the second step will reveal itself. And then if you find out like, okay, maybe I should have done this instead, that's information you didn't have before when you were stuck sitting there analyzing what to do. Now you have actually taken action, messy action, and you're moving, you're making progress. That is like the goal of the human experience is to move forward. So that's, I think, another reason why the mental dump is so powerful and motivating. It's because when you cross those things off, you are moving forward. I love it. I, I agree. The mental dump is my, <laughs> is my go-to. Okay. So tell me what are, say so we've got some, an overwhelmed mom listening to the podcast today. She's sitting there and she's like, golly, I'm so glad I turned this on. Nikki, what are three things you, what are three tips you would give her? Maybe you pull it out of your book or whatever. What are just some three life tips that you would give her today to take home? Okay. So first of all, I, I want to know if she's taking some time for herself. And for a lot of women, this is a trigger where they roll their eyes. They're like, easy for you to say, I don't have time. Yes, you do. Let's have like a tough conversation here. Yes, you do. Even if it's only five minutes, you've got five minutes. And if that means you have to wake up five minutes earlier, then that's what you do for yourself because you love yourself. And as you start to ingrain this practice into your day, you're going to realize, first of all, that you have way more than five minutes to take for yourself. And and also how important it is to take that time. Taking that time for yourself sets you up for all of your encounters after that, especially the ones with your kids, because you have more patience and you have just more stillness and more of a reservoir to, to draw on when you need some energy and some strength. I've worked my way up because of a deal I made with my husband. I now get like an hour and a half in the morning because he has taken on doing everything with the kids. Even if you don't have that, just take the time you do have and use it on yourself. So that is first and foremost. And people talk about it all the time. We talk about self-care, like to wear blue in the face, but it's because it's, it's necessary. It, it really does work. Yeah. Uh, self-care is so important. My latest advice for the same woman who's like, I don't have five minutes. If you're driving, you just then you have five minutes in silence, turn off the radio. Yeah. That is the latest and greatest tip. It's a no brainer. It's super easy. And it doesn't cost you quote unquote, if you can see us on YouTube, cost you any extra time because you are, if you're a mom, you're driving somebody to somewhere to do mm -hmm. something. God knows what it is. I'm like an East Texas Uber driver these days. Like I'm not, I'm unpaid also, by the way, but right. You have that time in the car. So utilize it and listen to your thoughts. What are they telling you? And it's not good or bad or indifferent. It's just information. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, I mean, some of the, my greatest, like best ideas these last six months have come driving in the car in silence. It's yeah. just a little bit of time and shutting your brain off. Even just to breathe in that time, like they're there's no shortage of breathing exercises you can research and just do them while you're driving. And again, that small, those little pockets of time where you are focusing just on you and your own well being are going to make a huge difference, especially as you do them over and over and over again, because then they compound. And you might be doubting us, but try it and you'll see. And I really think the overarching message here is what I want the viewers to listen to is that. If you desire change in your life, it's not these massive sweeping things. It is literally these small, simple things that Nikki and I are talking about. Five minutes breathing in the car, five minute meditation, a journaling mm -hmm. exercise to do a brain dump on Sunday. These are such simple things that you can just start to implement continuously over time and witness the result and the feeling that you have when you consistently do them mm -hmm. and then it builds. It's not, it's not like this huge, you don't need to like paint a meditation room and buy a mat oh, right. and like do like get all the gear and an outfit and, and like, like stand on your head for an hour. No. no, it doesn't need to be any of that. I think it is what resonates with me about our conversation so much today is that it is the change that we desire in our lives in these moments of overwhelm is the first step is just these simple actions of caring for us. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it it's always small. We talked about this in the very beginning. We take small steps because when we take big steps, that's when we're most likely to give up. It's just like the, you know, the, the new year's resolutions, at the beginning of the year, quitters day happens in January because people take these ginormous steps forward and they're unsustainable. Aaron and I are talking about five minutes. Five minutes, 
whether that's in your house, driving to someplace you are already going to drive to and turning off the radio and breathing, thinking, whatever it is, you, you can do that. So that's why I said tough love earlier when people tell me I don't have five minutes. I'm like, yeah, you do girlfriend. Yeah. Let's, let's just back out and, and think about this for a second. I know we're calling you guys forward today. If you're listening to this right now, you're turning off the noise after you turn off this podcast. We're calling you all forward today. I love it. Okay, Nikki, where can everyone find you? What do you have coming up in the next couple months? What does everyone need to know about you? Everyone needs to know that I'm on Instagram. So go follow me. I manage that account personally. I want to be friends with you. I see every like, comment, and DM. So it's just Nikki Oden, N-I-K-K-I-O-D-E-N. I'm also, of course, on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Audible with my book, but definitely wear mascara. And I'm also on bookshop.org. So if you like to support your local bookstore, you can go there. And if you purchase the book from bookshop.org, a percentage of the proceeds will go to a local bookstore in your area to support their brick and mortar. And you can always visit the website, youridealmomlife.com, or check out the podcast, Love Your Mom Life, which is available wherever you listen to podcasts. That is fantastic. We will drop all of that information in the show notes. You're the link to your book as well. Nikki, thank you so, so much for your time today. Seriously, I wish we lived closer because we would be, I mean, we don't even, we would need to have like a whole, whole dialogue here. It's too long for a podcast. We've got so much to chat about, but I appreciate you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, tag Nikki and I on Instagram, share it with a fellow sister in the law who you think needs this. Thank you so much for tuning into the Powerhouse Lawyers podcast this week. I'll see you next time. Remember, you're a powerhouse.